All right, guys. Uh, in this platform, we want to focus on more revisions, as I promised that we are going to have more revisions on our logarithms uh, exponents part. So there we are given, this is uh, this must be November 2019 paper, where we're given question number one. It was actually on question number one. 1.11, we are asked to simplify the following without using a calculator. Everything that we are going to do, a calculator is not allowed. All right, let's see the first part. AB to the exponent of minus two over AB and everything to the exponent of minus a third. If you were to notice there, there is something common about AB. So the AB part there is, is common, is the same thing. So it's just like, just like the same base. Remember your same base concept, guys. If you are working with the same base, what, or how do you do it? You are dividing, remember, and the same base. So this is just like a, to the exponent of a one. Okay, remember that, guys. This is like the same best. So I don't want you to, to have much, much calculations, Jay. Much, much, much calculations. Ah, just consider this. This is A, B. This is A, B. Same best. Just like X to the exponent of minus 2 divided to X. Well, how are you going to simplify this? You are dividing the same bases. You subtract exponents. So it is the same thing. A, B is the common best. So meaning to say we are going to have A, B to the exponent of minus two, minus one. So minus two, minus one, that's a minus three. But not forgetting that there is already an exponent of minus a third, which we are given outside of the major bracket, which is the bigger bracket. So we know that from the exponents, an exponent to an exponent, you are simply going to expand. So you multiply this, minus three times minus a third that was gonna give us a positive one. So it's AB to the exponent of a one, which is same as AB. Remember any number to the power of a one is same as that number. That was the idea there. So with this situation, with this condition, you could have uh, obtained your three marks. 1.2 again, simplify, that is 1.12. Uh, that is uh, five, the logarithm of four in the base of two, plus the logarithm of two in the base of four. So whenever you are to simplify logarithms, I said, just write them as simplest numbers, which means as prime numbers. All right, four can be written as a prime number, which is two. So that is gonna be two to the exponent of two in the base of two, plus the logarithm of two, and then the four that we are given there in the, in the base of two, like, the simplest number because we want to have it as a prime number. So this is two to the exponent of a two, the four. All right, the two that you're having is same as just two to the exponent of a one. Remember I explained about this law that if you are given a logarithm of a to the exponent of m, b to the exponent of n, this is same as you can drop the exponent uh, here. So it's gonna be m, over this one, over n, the logarithm of a in the base of b. And also to note that the logarithm of a in the base of a is equal to one. We talked about this. So meaning to say on this one, we can simplify this. This is the same as there's a one. So meaning to say here, we're just going to drop this x when the one does not affect. So you drop this one to multiply already there's a five. So the five is gonna multiply with this two. So that's five times a two. Five times these two, that is a 10, the logarithm of two in the base of two. Plus on this situation now, the one on this one, you drop it just like M, then the two again here. So it's gonna be one over two M over N. So that is one over two. The logarithm of what is remaining two and two. So it's the logarithm of two in the base of two. That's, that's the situation. Just like that, you can simplify your logarithms, knowing that the logarithm of A in the base of A is equal to one. If the number and the base are the same, that's a one. So meaning to say here, we are simply having, uh, that's a 10 times the logarithm of two in the base of two, which is a one plus 
one over two, the logarithm of two in the base of two, which is a one. So that's 10 times one, which is 10 plus one over two. And that was gonna be 10 and a half on your calculator. Uh, or that is uh, also, you can write it as a improper fraction, which was uh, 21 over two. It's one and the same thing. All right, so this is how you could have answered this question. You just need your laws. With the laws, you will see that guys, logarithms and exponents will become the easiest topic that you've ever met in your mathematics. It's only that you just need your laws. Work with your laws, understand your laws. All right, so that was it. Uh, 1.2, solve for x. So 1.2, when we are given the logarithm three log x base five, which is equal to 12 plus the logarithm of one in the base of a B, three marks. How is this possible? All right. The logarithm, all right, this is a 12 plus a one. All right, no problem. The logarithm of a one in any base, any, any base, whether it's base 10, it's base 20, it's base this, that's a zero. So meaning to say we have got the three, the logarithm of X in the base of five, which is equal to 12 plus a zero. So that's three, the logarithm of X in the base of five is equal to 12. All right, the three is just multiplying a log. So you can remove these three by just dividing this number both sides so that we remain with a single logarithm. The logarithm of X in the base of five is equal to three into 12 or 12 divided by three, that's a four. Remember that it is difficult to work out a logarithm to solve a logarithm. So it is always best that you do convert a logarithm to an exponent. How? The logarithm of A in the base of B, if it is equal to C, it implies that this is the same as A is equal to B to the exponent of a C. A is equal to B to the exponent of a C. So meaning to say our A is X. So that means X is equal to the best. The B is the best to the exponent of the answer and the answer is a four. So that is five to the exponent of a four. So that is how you simply uh, solve out these typical questions. And that was going to give us 625 if we simplify this on our calculators. Know your laws. That, that, is, that, that, is, that is the best thing. Know your laws. If you understand these laws, you'll see that you're not going to have any, any challenge. Uh, the disadvantage is that you are not given these laws in the formula sheet. So meaning to say that you have to take them by heart. All right. On 1.22, again, it is a solve for x. And there we are given 2x to the exponent of minus 4 over 3, which is equal to 32. So the two again is just multiplying. So you can just remove this by dividing the product. So remaining with a single term, which is equal to, if we divide this, that was gonna give you a 16. So having a single term and it's an X, which is on the best, as we can see, I say that if you're dealing with this type or this situation where X is in the best, you simply have to get rid of the exponent. And how do you get rid of the exponent? You find the reciprocal, which is the inverse of the exponent. And what is the inverse of minus four over three? The inverse is one over minus four over three, which is going to give us minus three over four. That is the inverse of this on your calculator. So with the original number to its inverse, this is what you're going to do. We are going to raise this to the exponent of the inverse. So as it is, you raise to the exponent of the inverse, minus three over four, to the exponent of the inverse, minus three over four. Why doing so? Because an original number, when multiplied to its inverse, it gives us a one. So if you multiply these two, you obtain a one, that's x to the exponent of a one. And having x to the exponent of one, it means we are having x. So x is simply equal to 16 to the exponent of minus three over four. But remember I said, as long as you're dealing with numbers, these numbers should be in simplest form. So 16 is same as what in simplest form, which is as a prime number. That is two to the exponent of a four being raised 
to the exponent of minus three over four. So you just figure out your prime numbers. There's two, there's three, there's five. That is, we can't use three on 16. So you try two to the exponent of one until you get the one that gives us a 16. That is the idea there. So this is it. Remember that an exponent to an exponent, they simply combine x to the exponent of m to the exponent of n is x to the exponent of m n. You multiply these. So you're going to multiply four times minus three over four, and this is gonna give us a negative three. So that's x is equal to two to the exponent of negative three. Remember that we are using the laws of exponents. The calculator is not allowed. So we are going to remove this as one over two to the exponent of three to remove a negative exponent. And this is one over eight. That is what you're going to have at the end. So this is how you can solve any given uh, equation of this nature. All you just need is to make sure that uh, everything is perfectly uh, presented in terms of uh, uh, in terms of what you understand. All right, uh, it is easier when you are solving an exponential equation. An exponential equation, uh, it is easier actually to work with. Uh, that is why even when you are given a logarithmic uh, a logarithmic equation, you have to change it to be an exponential at the end of the day. All right, number one point three. Solve for x. We are actually not solve. We are just simplifying for x. We are simplifying what is the value of x that is corresponding there, given that x is equal to three comma eight nine uh, times one comma eight nine to the exponent of two. Uh, everything over uh, the cube root of 153,8. So if you check, it's like, like a repetition where the, this, this type of equation is meant as like, I don't know how many persons we've worked with. So they were just given using the laws of logarithms. You are not limited to use the natural log, which is the Napierian logarithms, or to use just the logarithm in the best of 10, or to use the lean, which is the logarithm of X in the best of E. You are not limited so in this case i'm just going to use a normal log but you can just use whatever that you want in that case all right so this is the idea of the question that's 1.34 max so this is the idea i said whenever you're given this type of a question you are supposed to introduce the logarithms but first get rid of all the square roots all the cube roots as long as there's a root sign the first thing is to get rid of that remembering that the cube root means it is being raised to the exponent of a third. So this is 3,89 times 1,89 to the exponent of two, everything over 153,8 to the exponent of a third. Then we can introduce our logarithm. So in this case, like I said, I'm going to introduce the logarithm, a straight log in the base of a 10. So if I'm to introduce a logarithm, that means on the left-hand side, I'm going to have a log, also, on the right-hand side, I'm going to have a log. But the moment that a log is being used or is being applied, we are supposed to think of the laws of the logarithms. Which laws are we talking about? Talking of the division of the numbers, which was taken from the subtraction of the logarithms. I talked about this. So make sure that you also do watch the introduction so that you do understand all about uh, these laws that I am writing here. All right, so this is what you're going to be thinking of. There is a fraction there, so meaning to say for us to separate this fraction A over B, it was because you were subtracting the logarithms. So that means the logarithm of X is equal to the log of what is in the numerator, everything in the numerator, 3,89 times 1,89 to the exponent of two minus the log of B, log of what is in the denominator. So it's this log of what is in the denominator, which is 153,8 to the exponent of a third. Still, there is a multiplication that we are still experiencing in this bracket, and the multiplication was taken from what the addition of the logarithms. So it means the logarithm of X was taken from the logarithm of 3,89 plus the logarithm of 1,89 to 
to the exponent of two minus the logarithm of whatever that you're given there uh, to the exponent of a third. So this is the what we have. The last law that we are having is stating that if there is an exponent, drop the exponent to multiply the given logarithm. So meaning to say, if we, if I'm given an exponent like what I'm having here, I'm going to drop this to multiply the log, drop this to multiply the logarithm. So it becomes the logarithm of 3,89. I have to drop this exponent here to multiply the logarithm. So this is going to be plus to the logarithm of 1,89. I have to drop also this exponent to multiply the logarithm. So it's minus one over three, the logarithm of 1, 5, 3,8. So this is the idea. So with this situation that we are having here, what are we going to do is to simplify each and every logarithm separately. So is the logarithm of x is equal to, you simplify this, you simplify this, you simplify this separately, depending with the degree of accuracy that you're given. But as for me, I'm gonna use the three decimal places. Uh, so this is what I'm gonna have on this question. Uh, my calculator is already fixed to three decimal places. To do so, shift, set up, you go to number six, uh, which is fixed from zero to nine. So three decimal places, you press a three. So this is the logarithm of 3,89, 3,89 like this, which is going to give us 0 0,590. So this is 0 0,590 plus 2 log 1,89. So this is 2 log 1,89 like this. You close the bracket. Uh, so this will be 0 0,553, 0 0,553 minus a third log of whatever that you're given there, that is one over three, uh, the logarithm of this whole part, which is 153,8. So this is what you're going to have at the end, 0 0.729, 0 0.729. So I want you to add everything that you're having on the right-hand side. You are going to see that the logarithm of X was going to be equal to this whole part. So let's add uh, that's 0, 0,5, all right, 0, 0,59 plus 0, 0,553, all right, minus 0, 0,7, okay, I didn't subtract there, minus 0, 0,729, like this. So this will give us approximately uh, 0, 0,414. So this is what we are having at the end. So with this, what are we going to do? We are going now to determine the X value from this logarithm, remembering that we are using a normal log and on a normal log, we are in the best of 10. Even if you check on your calculator, when you're using this log on top, there is a 10 to the exponent of. So you simply use that shift 10 on that log to the exponent of the answer. That is your answer there, which is 2, uh, 2, 5, Nine. So that is our X. Or you can take it like this. X is equal to the base to the exponent of the answer, which is 0, 0.414. So this will give us uh, the X value that we got 10 to the exponent of the answer, which is 2,594. So this is 2,594. So that is the X value that we are going to have at the end if you are using uh, this calculation. All right, so this is just an approximate value. So you simplify this, you get the exact value from this. But if you are using these logarithms, remember you're working with the rounded off figures. So at the end of the day, whatever that you're going to have is a rounded off value and it's an estimate value from the original value or from the exact value that you were supposed to uh, calculate it before. So these are the typical questions that you're going to have uh, in your final examinations, you just have to work with more questions. Make sure that you cater yourself for the exams which are ahead of time. But for now, that's it. Till we meet again.